And I thought a different question, like, you hear different uh, meditation teachers talk about sleep. A lot of them recommend sleeping less. Some of them a lot, a lot less. What, what do you think about uh, that? Like how long <laughs> for sleeping at night? You know, I know it's, it's a very difficult uh, question to answer. <laughs> yeah. The recommendation is less sleep, okay? but if you are sleepy, then go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, if it's really sleepy, then there are ways to deal with it, mm. uh, and you can try, and you still can't deal with it, then go to sleep. Okay. Uh, so there is no fixed time for each individual that, okay, you must do this and you must do that. Um, each individual's uh, capability are different. Uh, Although it says that to sleep less and practice more. Mm. Uh, so each individual's faith and confidence are different. Their efforts are different. And also, the, if we believe in the law of karma, then it comes on the, the parameters mm. or perfections. So it's also based on that as well. Okay. So um, someone can do like the Buddha did 18 hours, mm. and some cannot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, individuals testing and finding. Mm. Okay. Uh, but if you can, it's good. Mm. Uh, okay. Mm. Mm. Right. So, uh, so far we have done the Udeso, uh, Udesa, the introduction, yeah, the opening page, uh, opening the discourse and then the introduction part. And now this is a, a practical part that we are studying. That's from the page number four, it's a Kaya Nupasana. Yeah, the Kaya Nupasana is... Uh, observing the body or revisiting or closely paying attention to the body. That's the Kaya Nupasana. So although it starts from the Kaya Nupasana, it also tells us a place which we discussed yeah, last session. Uh, a place should be uh, uh, conducive. Uh, so that's why there is Aranyagatova, Rukkamulagatova, Sunyakaragatova. So this was the one we uh, discussed last week. So let's chant from the Kaya Nupasana together. Kaya Nupasana, yeah. Katam Japana Bhikkhuve Bhikkhu Kaya Kaya Nupasi Viharati Ida Bhikkhuve Bhikkhu Aranya Katova Rukha Mula Katova Sunya Kara Katova Nisida ti palam kang a putitawa Ujunka yang panidhaya parimukang satim upatapetawa So sato were assasati Sato were patsasati Di gangwa atsasanto Di gang atsasami di pachana di Di kangwa patsa santo di kang patsa sami di pachana di rasangwa atsa santo rasang asa sami di pachana di rasangwa patsa santo rasang pasa sami di pachana di sapa kaya pati sambei di asa si sami di sikati Sabba kaya pati samvedhi pasa si samiti sikhati. Pasam hayang kaya samkharang asa si samiti sikhati. Pasam hayang kaya samkharang pasa si samiti sikhati. So this is 
the uh, again it has got the two sections one is the instruction and the where and the how and the second is the technique right. so here aranya gato wa rukamula gato wa sunya kara gato wa so three words three places yeah speaking about the three places and here the reason behind I think I mentioned last time as well, but I will just uh, add a little bit more on that. That um, our senses are always engaged in the world, the affairs, and as a result of that, it's a very difficult to uh, meditate. Uh, and uh, going into these woods and uh, empty huts basically helps us to reduce the sensual engagement with the worldly affairs and as a result it's easy to put things down and to meditate if we look at the similes uh, the simile was given that a calf uh, is always want to drink milk from the, uh, a mother cow at all the time whenever it pleases so uh, a farmer will train this calf by Uh, tying this calf with a post for some times uh, and then releasing it later. So while this calf is uh, tied with the post for some times, now initially it will struggle. It will try hard to pull this post away or uh, uh, the cut cuts the ties and so she, this calf can go and drink a milk. It doesn't matter how hard it tries, but realizing that there is nothing it can do, so it settles and it will stay with the post. And so that's a similar, uh, as uh, given uh, similar to whenever we go to the woods or forests or the empty huts, initially we will be struggling a lot because of the mind is conditioned with the worldly affairs like you. You may have experience as well because you're living in a house and dealing with the works and the children and the family and friends and so much. And with that, whenever you go to meditate, and immediately you will find difficult. So it takes time to settle. So, similar way, but if you go to the woods and meditate, you are cutting off these distractions. So easy to uh, free yourself. So initially you will be fighting like a calf is fighting, uh, but realizing that nothing that uh, disturbs your senses, and gradually it settles. Okay? Gradually it settles. So that's how uh, the mind is settled uh, in the state of a meditation. And after that, um, there is a ujumkaya panidhaya, so sitting in the upright position. That's a parimukhaṃ satim upatthapetava. Parimukhaṃ satim upatthapetava. So thapetava is establishment. Last word, upatthapetava. Thapetava means establishment. So you are establishing your mindfulness at, okay? so upa and the at. Uh, so parimukham. Now here parimukham I mentioned last time as well that there are different explanations for that. Some would say that the parimukham in front of your face uh, and the translation is at front. And some also, this is again from uh, Uh, if I remember correctly, it is from the Patisandhidama, one of the scriptures, explains about it. Uh, it's not about uh, the body, it's not about the, uh, the uh, face, but it's about your, your, you are mindful of the object in a, in a whole. So, Uh, uh, entire uh, object. So you're mindful of the entire object as you're paying attention to. Mm -hmm. I 
think this is from saying Pata purification somewhere. Or, uh, maybe, you know, either of these books. I okay, can mention that one. So that's why the Paribukong has got a different interpretation. And on the basis of that, again, uh, we realize that the translation is simply we are trying to make sense of it. <laughs> uh, and uh, my understanding is Paribukham is you are having uh, mindful of your body sitting and aware of the entire body. Okay? So that is uh, uh, Paribukham Satin Upatapetawa. Yeah, Upatapetawa is establishment. Uh, and that is the way how we sit and pay attention to. And after that, where are we paying attention to it? Right? And here comes so sato wa atsa sati. Right? And here, so breathe in. You're aware that breathing in. Yeah. So, sato wa atsa sati, sato wa patsa sati. So, you are aware of incoming breath and outgoing breath. So, here again, doesn't say that you have to pay attention to the nose. Right? And here, paying attention to the nose, it comes from the path of purification. That is one of the very good uh, manual that was written a long time ago by the commentator called Buddha Gosha. So he was the one who compiled uh, that summary of the entire uh, te text uh, that's called Path of Purification. And in that Path of Purification it says that you pay attention to the nose, nostrils. And as it comes in, as it comes out. Uh, and as a result of uh, that again, quite a few uh, scholars and the practitioners also uh, rejects, reject uh, the uh, path of purification. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so sato wa atsa sati, sato wa patsa sati. So you're aware of incoming breath and outgoing breath. So here, aware. Yeah? First sentence is aware. Now further on, saying now again, just uh, okay, just to make, give you uh, further in, in, uh, information. This repeats in the Anapanasati, a breathing meditation. There is another discourse. It's called Anapanasati Sutta. And it has the 16 stages of a breathing meditation practice. And this section also comes in that Anapana Sati Sutra as well. And after you're aware of the incoming breath and outgoing breath, so that's again here, naturally paying attention to the breath as it comes in, as it goes out. And there comes Digangwa Asasanto Digang Asasamiti Pajanati. Right? So Digang means long breath. Long. When there is a long breath, you know that you are breathing in long. So first one was aware. The second one is no. So, digam wa asasanto, digam asasamiti, pajanati. Pajanati is knowing. Janati means knowing. Pajanati also becomes the knower. So, long breath, you know. Now, here doesn't mean that you are making a long breath. You're not making, not like that, right? So, 
And here also one we have to uh, understand this practice is not the pranayama in a hatha yoga. Mm -hmm. right? In a hatha yoga it's called one part is called pranayama. That means you are exercising your breath. So there, there, in a pranayama it comes you're making a long breath and a short breath and following the breath. Yeah? Like say, let's say long, uh, making a long breath. And holding, yeah, and then releasing as long as you can. So you're basically you're releasing entire breath from your belly out, yeah? and then automatically you are taking a breath. But when you're taking a breath, you're making a long again. So you're taking as long as you can, and then releasing. So that's called Diganga Hatsa Santo. No, this is in Pranayama. Okay? And then releasing also, uh, long breath coming out and you are following. And then another one is you are following each breath. Right? So that's a Pranayama. So you can control your breath, uh, you can play with the breath. So that's the Pranayama. So here, we are not talking about the breath. So we are not controlling the breath at all. Uh -huh. So here, the first aware of your breath, you are locating your mind to be mindful where the breath is coming in and going out. And here, uh, it comes a location, it comes a connection, and it comes absorption. Uh -huh. So you know where you are, paying attention to, and you're connecting with, your mind is constantly following with this breath, and then fully absorbed. Yeah? And when you're fully absorbed, this time our breath is still very gross. Not settled yet. It's still very gross. The simile is given like when someone is running, or when someone is going up the hill, become a breathless. So that's the coarse breath. And then that happens when we meditate, when we pay attention to breath, then that is become so coarse. That's similar to that. Yeah? So we become mindful of that. And then with that, as our mind settles, uh, when we are absorbed with the breath, then we realize the different breaths. Okay? Different breaths, and the long and the short breath it's become. So that's why here the first uh, practice is Digamba Atsa Santo, Digam Atsa Samiti Pajanati, Digamba Patsa Santo, Digam Patsa Samiti Pajanati, and then Rasam. Yeah? Rasam means short. Rasangwa Atsa Santo, Rasan Asa Samiti Pajanati, Rasangwa Patsa Santo, Rasan Pasa Samiti Pajanati. So here, long breath and a short breath, you know. So this different breaths we realize when our mind settles, absorbed. So it's first location, connection, and absorbed. So you become a one. Your mind becomes one with the breath. Ability to follow. Yeah? And the mind and the breath become a one. And then that moment, you see the different breaths. Short breath and a long breath. Not because you are making it, but you see it. And here again, in this moment, uh, <clears throat> When we are paying attention to the breath, often what happens is like we are making it. Uh, we are doing it. So there is like a, in a subconsciously we are making the breath to happen. Uh, and this subconsciously uh, happening, that, that moment, uh, immediately after you have known it, we have to withdraw that effort that you are making it happen. So rather than doing, become an observer. 
Right? So you're observing it. Okay? So that is the second part. So first was awareness of the breath. Second is knowing the breath. Different breath. Right? And then here uh, comes Sabha Kaya Patisam Vedi Atsa Sami Tisikati. Okay, before we go in there, anything you want to ask? Anything you want to add on? Long breath and short breath? No? Okay. So this long breath and a short breath becomes very shallow as our mind becomes more established. And here again, the difference is if we are using any other objects to pay attention to or practicing it, those objects become clearer, more visible. Uh, you see it more clearly. Uh, and it's become so empirical. Every time when you close your eyes and pay attention to it, that object becomes so clear. You can see it exactly what it is. And the difference here in the breathing meditation, the more your mind becomes concentrated, breath becomes less and less visible. <laughs> it's become a shallower and shallower. And sometimes it's like, is there or is it not? <laughs> right? And that sort of a state will come. And that's simple because the quietness of the mind yeah? And then it's uh, very difficult and it's very easy. The mind will go off to something else because there is nothing. Mm -hmm. You will have a doubt. You will have a confusion. Yeah? Uh, and with that, then again, you don't want to practice anymore. <laughs> yeah? And then there is another uh, also... Uh, the simile also given, the sim same simile when you are going up the hill. At this moment, because of the shortness of the breath, you will be breathing so much and you are aware of that breath. Yeah? You are making a breathing in and breathing out and you are conscious about this breath so much. But after it normalized, that moment again, you are not conscious of the breath. You are not paying attention to the breath. Mm -hmm. yeah? And this moment, is there a breath or is it not? Uh, that sort of a state will come. Uh, and that is the, 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 the shallowness of the breath developed. Uh, but Ajahn, during our um, normal life, like our tasks, what we are doing daily, a lot of times I don't pay attention to my breath. Mm. And that doesn't mean that my mind is absorbed. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's different. It's a different. Uh... It is a different, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Right? So that's why it's in, not in the practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But when we are practicing, initially we see it coming and going out. Like when you are mm -hmm. walking up the hill, we see it coming in and going out so, come, you know, so easily. And after we settled, after our mind settled, we don't have to pay attention to it. And often it goes off. Mm -hmm. right? So that's why they, uh, when we practice that also like that, it becomes very shallow. Uh, and here, the next one comes. Mm -hmm. That's called Sabha Kaya Pati Samvedi Asa Sisami Tisikati Sabha Kaya Pati Samvedi Asa Sisami Tisikati so, the translation uh, here, feeling the whole body I shall breathe in. Uh, here, the translation. Mm -hmm. Now, here again, the last word is different. Okay? The long breath and the short breath use the word Pajanati, knowing. And in this section, it is saying Sikhati. 
Sikati means training. So now here, it's not just about knowing the breath, but now you are training with the breath. So you are training with the breath. How you are training now, okay? So here saying, experiencing the entire body. Sabba kaya patisambhiti. Experiencing the entire body. And here, experiencing the entire body, again, there are different explanations for it. Uh -huh. Some would say that Sabha Kaya Pati Samvedi means experiencing the entire breath body. So breath itself. So you are you're paying attention to it. Yeah, and the Visuddhima, the path of purification speaks, you are aware of incoming breath from the beginning, middle and end. Which is similar to pranayama. So you are aware of incoming breath from the beginning, middle and the end. And that is called entire breath. And then going out, beginning, middle and the end. Okay. That is called the breath body. Okay. So you are experiencing the entire breath as it comes in and as it goes out. That is one explanation. Another explanation is, as you breathe in, you are training yourself with the breath in, experiencing the entire body. So, experiencing the entire body. Then when you breathe out, again, experiencing the entire this body rather than one breath body. Right? So, one breath. And here I can see the, the second explanation, which is experiencing the entire body, rather than just the breath. Uh -huh. Because it's not a training about uh, knowing the breath, uh -huh. but it's about paying attention to the entire body. That's why it's the kaya, kaya and the person. Paying attention to the body, observing the body. Mm -hmm. And here, this, um, this book also translates feeling the whole body. Yeah? Feeling the whole body. And again, here, if you practice, as your mind settles, then what happens is that because of the shallowness of the breath, you could able to experience the entire body. Yeah? As it like uh, expands it, uh, as breathing it expands, and then as breathe out it contracts. So you see the connection with this breath coming in and going out. So this is called sabha kaya pratisambhi. So interaction. Okay? This is the. The third one, yeah, Sikhati, who trains. And here training again, here training, you strive, and then you also endeavor, endeavor to do. So you are fully attending there. And in this uh, um, uh, Sikhati, basically, you have no other objects involved now. You're fully absorbed with that object, that is the breath. Mm -hmm. And then how this breath is uh, making it uh, the entire body. So you are experiencing the entire body. So Sikhati is training with a, a full effort in there, so striving and endeavor to uh, see the entire body. So that's called training to see the entire body as breathing and breathing out. Mm -hmm. 
Now, then the fourth one. Pasam bhayam kaya sankharam asa sisamiti sikhati. Pasam bhayam kaya sankharam asa sisamiti sikhati. This is also a troubled one. And this passage is also a troubled one. Particularly the word pasam bhayam kaya sankhara. And this is a very troublesome one. Still debate going on. Uh, who is right, who is wrong, we do not know. <laughs> okay? And each individual, and whether a practitioner or whether meditation teachers or whether the scholars, and they're still working on that. And everybody is trying to make sense of it by analyzing the word. <laughs> and by analyzing the word, what does this mean? And then meanwhile, practitioners will be explaining from their experience what does this mean. Okay? So this is Pasam Bayam. Uh, here the translation in this book saying, With the bodily activity calmed, I shall train. Okay? So that is, again, the last one is the Sikhati, so the training. Pasam bhayam kaya sankhara. This is quite an interesting one. Pasam means seeing actually. Pasam. Bhayam means the danger. Pasam bhayam. Kaya Sankhara. Kaya means the body. Sankhara means creation or formation. And now here, um, some would say that as you breathe in, the formation of the entire body being calmed. Uh, and you train to see that. And some would say, seeing the danger of forming the kaya, the body. So you train yourself with the breath to see the how danger forming the kaya, the body. The seeing it, the pasam, right? seeing the danger of that. Right? Like that. And for this practice, again, my own understanding and my practice is that you're experiencing interconnectedness with the breath and the body. So in this moment what happens is that in this stage body is making the breath to happen or breath is making the body to function. So it's interrelationship is there going on. And each one helping one to calm down. And this stays, mind becomes very subtle, uh, very subtle and fully absorbed with this process. So that's why as you breathe in and breathe out, like there is none. You can't see it coming in and going out. Right? And then meanwhile, you cannot feel your entire body. So it's fully connected. And this moment, sometimes people even experience, where is my body? My body is disappeared. Eh? Like that. So it's basically, and so that's what my, my understanding is that you're experiencing the body and the breath working in, you know, together, forming one another, but because of sure shallowness working together, is so calm, so it's not creating furthermore, but it's functioning. Okay. And the word danger, Ajahn, so is the danger. See, but you were saying bayam, yeah. bayam means danger. So yeah. it's kind of if we perceive it 
like we don't have body, something like that. Well, that's different. Seeing a maya here is whenever there is a kaya, you're creating, mm -hmm. furthermore, you are going towards the suffering more. Okay, I understand. Yeah? Okay. yeah. So. Um, like that. Right? So that's called pasambhaya. Uh, and what else I should tell? Uh, or some, uh, yeah. mm. And the sankhara again, yeah, okay. Uh, the sankhara is a tricky word as well. And the sankhara, it has got a lot of information. Uh, so it also refers to the old condition. So, let's like, say. Sabbe Sankhara Anicca. Sankhara here means the old conditions. So here, Sabbe Sankhara, old condition things are Anicca, impermanent. Uh -huh. And then Sankhara here, it's also part of a fine aggregate. Do you know fine aggregate? You know? No, it's by heart, but the yeah. so feeling all the. Yeah. So, blocks yeah. so five aggregates basically is mind and a body. Okay, so this our life is defined in a, in a five categories. So first it is divided into two categories that is called mind and a body. And this mind and a body, a body is one entity, and this mind Again, divided into four entities or four aggregates, and that's how it's become five aggregates. And this is like uh, for the mind section, it says feeling, Vedana, yeah, and the Sanya, perception, Samhara, yeah, and here formation, and then Vijnana, consciousness. So this is called the five aggregates. And this defines our life, our body and mind. So, Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankhara, Vinyana. Yeah, so, Rupa is a body. It is made of a, a five, sorry, uh, four elements. Yeah? And further on, um, this Rupa is again divided into 28 different parts. Or if you look at the anatomical way, then it's a 32 parts, uh, starting from the hair of the head, you know, goes on. Um, and this body, because of uh, only made out of a material, uh, doesn't feel. Basically, this body doesn't feel. It's just the one part, one molecule. Uh, it's just like a, a bowl. It hasn't got any feelings. Now, that is the body definition from the Buddhist point of view. Okay. And then, Vedana is a feeling. Sanya is a perception. And Samhara is formation. And these three are known as mental factors. And these three are known as the mental factors. Without these, mind doesn't exist. Mind uh, exists only because of these three. The last one is a consciousness or a vinyan. Okay? So these are the four called the nama or the mind. In a short term, this is called the five aggregates. Okay? And in this five aggregate, the number four is called a sankhara. Yeah? And this number, number four, sankhara, is not just a, a formation, it is also uh, known as volitional formation, intention here, yeah. uh, your will to do, the like intention. You're intending to do something, you're intending to make something happen. 
And here again, because of that intention, you are physically doing or speaking. Okay? And here, speaking or physically doing, it is also conditioned by the mental, uh, because there is evolution, intentions, mind involves there too. Okay? So that's how you are performing. And because of this, you are making or you are forming something. And this comes, this is in the F5 aggregate. Meanwhile, this also comes in a dependent origination. Okay, second factor. That's how you call avijja pateya samkhara. Ignorance is the base, the condition that arises the sankhara. Okay? Formation or volusional formation or intention. And here, because of the sankhara, pataya vinya, the consciousness arises because of the existence or conditioning of this sankhara consciousness arises. And in the particular, sorry, in this dependent origination, the sankhara is um, your action towards wholesome or unwholesome action. It's called punyavi sankhara, apunyavi sankhara, and nenyanyavi sankhara. And this last one is again you will experience after you have attained the jhanas. Right? After you have attained the jhanas. And that goes further other place. Right? And this sankhara, again, in order to create this sankhara, you have to have this tanha, craving. Craving is the base. And this craving to arise because there is ignorance. Right? You are ignorant of the uh, what the uh, what is the ignorant of the ignorance of the vedana yeah? feeling that arises in the present moment and with that what happens that you have uh, attachment to it and with that attachment it's called a kamma bhava so you are making it to exist and that's how that existence brings the consciousness. Vinyan. Yeah? So it's become a chain of a creating new forms. Right? So that's why the Sankhara is very uh, big topic. Right? And then a very moment when you attain the enlightenment that enlightenment state is called visankhara yeah? or asankhara. There's two words. Visankhara or asankhara means non-conditioned, non, uh, not forming anymore, unconditioned state. Yeah. So that's why uh, uh, when the Buddha enlightened, he said, visankhara gatam chitta. The mind has attained or gone beyond the sankharas. Yeah? And that is the state of enlightenment. So that's why the sankhara is very interesting one, very difficult. That's why probably is the reason this part of the explanation is always still in trouble. <laughs> right? And I'm not saying that what I'm saying is right. Right. I'm not saying that what I am explaining is the correct one. I'm just giving you the information that I know. I have experienced how far, how much I do understand. That is I'm sharing. And after you practice, if you're enlightened, maybe you will have a different explanation for it. <laughs> <laughs> okay? So it's entirely uh, uh, us uh, depending on our practice. But however, Today we finished of this first practice is called Anapan Baba. Okay, so the breathing meditation, the breathing part. 
here, but there is further on, it's called a ref I think it's in, in refrain, in English, in English called refrain, and which is still, I struggle to um, conceptualize what the refrain means, but this is a simply, when we read the Pali, it's simply trying to give example to understand more deeply on what and how to practice this bringing meditation. Okay? So we end here with this, and um, next week we will discuss on the refrain part. Okay? So before practicing loving kindness, anything you want to ask? Um, the, uh, there's so much different, like, uh, like explanations, like you have, like, in Burma, but it's like Vipassana. Yeah. They say, like, you don't need, the jhana's not important. You can have insight. And then you have, like, the, like, Ajahn Man or Ajahn Chah, they're, they're, well, we wouldn't maybe talk about the jhanas, but they are say you need the jhanas. So it's, it's, so it's <laughs> like a friendly, Debate, you know, <laughs> it's confusing. You don't have to be confused. <laughs> uh -huh. my, my, my response would be when you are traveling to London, suppose you are driving, there are so many stations that you can mm -hmm. go in. Okay. Yeah? So some would go every station and others will go straight away to the... Uh, yeah, that way, or the plane, yeah. or the boat, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. It's up to each an individual's preference, mm -hmm. and that also based on uh, their temperaments, mm -hmm. and which way they are practicing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, it doesn't matter whether you are going through the jhana or not. It's a matter of uh, developing furthermore. And even though you attend the jhanas, you still have to leave the jhanas. Mm -hmm. yeah? You have to go beyond the jhanas. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, some would practice, it's called vipassana as a base, mm -hmm. samatha as a follower, and then that practice doesn't need the jhanas. Mm -hmm. yeah? Doesn't need the jhanas. Doesn't mean that they would not experience possibility of experience, or maybe they would. Mm -hmm. uh, and if we are practicing samatha as a base, then definitely you will go through the jhanas. Mm -hmm. uh, and either path, if we experience any state of the jhanas, or any uh, experiences of it, glance of it, enjoy, you know, uh, be happy, appreciate, matter is, do not just stay in that station, mm -hmm. break point and return. Mm -hmm. You have to go further. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. okay. No problem with the jhanas. Okay. Uh, but when we look at the suttas, we realize Buddha is always encouraging us to attend the jhanas as well. Mm -hmm. right? And the jhanas becomes the path, no, sorry, the, the base. Right, to to further uh, furthering towards the insight, uh, the majority of the discourses are explaining in this way, mm -hmm. attaining the jhanas and go further. Uh, again, um, there are some places Buddha also says, "This is not the path. Right? This is not the path to enlightenment." And that here doesn't mean you can't have it. Saying that this is not the end of it, mm -hmm. you have to go further. Okay. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, in a Mahasya again, although it's from a momentary concentration, you're developing from a momentary concentration, yeah, gradually as you develop on that, eventually you also attain the Apana Samadhi. That means you do attain some form of the jhanas, jhanic mm -hmm. experience, but will not. Uh, emphasize on it mm -hmm. because sometimes when you emphasize it and you uh, absorb on it, you stop there. Mm -hmm. So, in the Mahasasayalo technique, basically letting you understand the Nama and the Rupa and seeing the 
impermanence of it. Mm-hmm. And even any experiences, that's all becomes impermanent. Mm-hmm. Yeah? There you go. Okay. Thank mm-hmm. you. Okay. Right. Okay. Let's practice the loving kindness meditation to finish. Bring attention to the moment here and now and spend some time on tonight's discussion. Particularly, uh, tonight's practice is the uh, breathing meditation. So, first is to be aware of the incoming breath and outgoing breath. The second is knowing a long breath and a short breath, incoming and outgoing. Do not make it. I do not try to make a long or a short breath, but just uh, let it be and see the difference. And training yourself to see the entire body, or entire breath body. Experiencing the entire body expands and contracts as you breathe in and breathe out. training yourself with breath to see the entire body connected. And training yourself with the breath to see the entire body calms. Breathing comes, body comes.
we'll practice the loving kindness meditation, so bring attention to the body, experiencing the, whatever sensations are there, be mindful of it. And bring that attention to your hands, feeling the sensations in your hands, and to your heart, feeling the beating heart and sharing love and kindness and compassion to yourself. I am well. I am happy, I am at peace. I am well, I am happy, I am at peace. Similarly sharing loving kindness and compassion for all other sentient beings, starting from the ideal ones, and all other sentient beings, visible and invisible beings in the room, in the city, on earth, in the universe. May they be well, may they be happy, may they be at peace. May they be well, may they be happy, may they be at peace. Here they come, slowly coming out, and reflect for a few moments. <laughs> 